Uh, hi everybody, I'm Brent English, President of Robust Tools, and today I'm in Sam Angelo's well-equipped wood turning studio where he shoots all of his videos featuring robust equipment. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Sam. Now the project for today, I'm going to make a lidded container out of this amazing maple burl. And I'm going to do a little voiceover and I'm going to show you uh, milling this blank up on my bandsaw and uh, I'll get this all ready to go on the lathe. What I'm going to do is make a lid out of the top part of this piece of wood. So first thing I'll do is I'll take my bandsaw and just slice that off and I've got to determine how thick I want to make that. Okay, because that's going to really have an impact on the design and the shape later on. Uh, I'll have to think about that and on the bandsaw I'll set a fence up and make a nice straight cut on that and that part will be my lid. The other decision I have to make is which will be the top, either this part right here or this. And I'm thinking this, this section up here is going to be really, really pretty. So that'll probably be my lid. And then after I cut that off on my bandsaw, I'm going to cut all that round. Okay, and then we'll go over to the lathe and we'll start making this lidded container. Okay, now in that last clip, I was testing the moisture content of my uh, lid and the base. And somewhere around 18, 19, 20 percent is the moisture content I got, which I'm real happy with. It's not real wet, not dry, but if I can get that down to 10 or 12 percent later on, I'm happy. I may just uh, do that a little bit in the microwave. So let me bring you in just a little bit closer and I'll show you how I'm going to chuck up the base of my project and also the lid. All right, let me show you my connection here. I've got a a nice steel face plate. It's probably three inches in diameter. I've got a, a block of wood attached to that and this actually used to be an old cutting board. Alright, be careful trying this at home. I got the lathe turned way, way down. Lock my, my spindle and make sure that's on there very, very nicely. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a spacer in here. All right. And let's uh, let's see how this fits on the lid. I may I may just put another spacer in there. I think I will. All right. I went and got another spacer because I think that's probably all I need for the lid. Just not sure if that's enough to hold that on there, so I don't want to strip it out. So what I need to do at this point is to establish some sort of a, a tenon or, or a, a place I can put chuck jaws and secure that and turn it around and finish the underside of my lid. Okay, now while I've got your attention, here's my, here's my base. And this is the inside of it, <laughs> if you will. And I've got a a screw hole. Uh, I have a hole drilled in there for my screw chuck. This is the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a waste block on the bottom of that. So we'll uh, take care of the, the lid and then we'll put the base on there and I'll have um, places where I can uh, chuck these these pieces up. I may throw caution to the wind and just uh, kind of work on that just a little bit without my tail center. All right, now I'm going to use my very large Vicmark chuck for this. And keep in mind, this is going to be just temporary. So I'm going to mark this with uh, some dividers. Get a, get a mark on there. Turn it 
turn my lathe off. Okay, right, right there. That inside line is where I need to be. Now I'll make just a small tenon on that. So I'm going to clean up the surface. And before I continue, I'm going to establish a tenon with a parting tool here. Now I'm going to turn the speed up just a little bit more so I don't get quite so much resistance to this. Go back to my my bowl gouge. Now I'm going to work on the, the rim of my lid here and that's quite a bit of uh, leverage on that so I am going to bring up my, my tail center for some moral support. Now I can tell this, this burl is a little bit punky so I may, may end up uh, fortifying that with some CA glue. Okay, a little bit more speed. I'm going about a thousand RPM right now. One more time with my parting tool. And that should be good to reverse and work on the underside of my lid. Alright, it's time to work on the base of my project. So same screw chuck and I was going to mention that what I have in here is an anchor bolt. This is something found in woodworking, furniture making. The other end of this is a, a thread for a nut and I've got a nut and washer on the other side of this. This is more of a screw thread right here. Anchor bolt. So turn the lathe on not very fast. This will this will wind on there pretty safely, and yeah, just have to know when to take your hand away. Okay, now that's a very good fixing on there, and I don't know if you can see the the wobble here. So I'm going to take that down with my bowl gouge. 
level that off. And I've decided to put a waste block on this that'll have a tenon so I don't waste any of this wood right here. Turn the speed up a little bit. Yeah, let's call that 900. Crank up the speed just a little bit. Alright, now I'm going to show you my glue block right here. And I've already got a, a tenon established on that, so I'll center this up in that direction, glue that on there. Now, if you look at the underside of my glue block, it's not solid all the way to the center. And I often do this. I'll just glue this area right here, and I'll part that off eventually, and that's probably an inch and an eighth or so, and I'll know exactly when that's going to uh, part off. So, I need to clean this uh, surface up a little bit better. I'll do that off camera, and then we'll glue that waste block on there. All right, now what I've done here to prepare my, my base is to level that off. And I took a sanding block with some heavy sandpaper and just try to flatten that as best I, I can do. Here's my waste block. And what I've done here, this area that looks wet, I flooded that with very thin CA glue a couple times. And I think that'll give me a better connection there. So. I think it's prudent to use just good old woodworker's glue. This is some tight bond, original tight bond. I'm going to just uh, put that approximately where it's going to go. Spread my glue around. And I like to let that glue sit for 30 seconds. 45 seconds and that'll allow that glue to sort of uh, soak into the, the surface of the wood. Now, and I think I need a little bit more on my my waste block here. So I'll clamp this with my my tail center right there. And I've got a, a cone center in my tailstock. That'll center that up very nicely. And that looks like it's running really true. And I'm going to just kind of turn that a little bit. Yeah. In 20 minutes, I'll be ready to do a little bit more turning on this. I'm cranking up some more pressure on my, my tailstock quill. Now I'm going to give you a little play-by-play -play as I work on the bottom of my vessel on the base. And I ordinarily do quite a bit of work off camera, so I'm going to show you some clips of uh, me profiling the base. And I'll give you some different camera angles as I progress. I'm using a bowl gouge to work on the area near the waste block. And once I do as much profiling as I can, I'll reverse this piece and put it into the tenon, into a scroll chuck. Now I've changed the camera angle and I'm showing you an area that I spend quite a bit of time filling with some sawdust and CA glue. It was a bark inclusion that was just going to interfere with the profile of my base. I've got the camera backed off to show you the next step. I'm going to tilt the tailstock away. 
And that pendant, that control unit uh, on a cord is very, very handy. I can put it in an, a place that's safe and I can get to it very easily. Now if you recall, I've got this mounted on a screw chuck and I'm just uh, taking this off. I'll put my scroll chuck in there and the scroll chuck is a Vicmark 120 with two inch jaws. Now I have my lathe turning in reverse and I just uh, take that screw chuck off. It's got a face plate on it. Put my scroll chuck on the spindle and in preparation for working on the top of the base, hollowing that out. Tighten her down and there's a good shot of the profile of my base so far. Now I'm showing you uh, a cutout on a piece of uh, black paper and that's the profile I'm going with. And I've got uh, a little detail on the top. That's going to be my lid. And once the base is complete to my satisfaction, I'll work on the lid. And I'm going to do some sort of a little handle detail on the top of the lid. I've got something in mind. And this is really trued up fairly well. I'm going to do a little bit more profiling on the very top of that. I'm going to decrease the diameter of that area right there that's going to be eventually the uh, location for the lid. Now I'm going to have a word later on about this piece of wood. It's really punky. I'm not extremely happy with it. It's uh, very porous and I've done a lot of stabilizing on this piece of wood with CA glue. In some spots I've covered it with CA glue and sawdust and I almost think it's maybe some dry rot. Just not sure. So I'm working on the very, very bottom of my base, and if you look at the, the profile, you can kind of see where I'm going with that. The outside of the base, I've got that covered with CA glue. I've just uh, totally saturated the surface, and that really helps a lot, and I can get a better finish eventually. This is a burl, so it's not exactly uh, cross grain, although it's probably closer to cross grain than end grain, but any grain or figure is just going in a lot of different directions. So I'm taking a parting tool. I'm taking a parting tool and locating the area that will uh, hold the lid of my vessel. And that'll give me something to shoot for as I uh, take wood out from the center of that. So I just go back to a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and start hogging out some wood. I'm not sure how exactly wet this wood is. It's uh, a little bit wet, but it's uh, not going to cause me any problem with shrinking or cracking later on. I'm not exactly getting nice ribbons of wood coming off that. It's more chips and dust from my gouge. And periodically I'll check the depth, make sure I'm in the right spot there. All right, moving right along with the inside of my base, I'm taking a bottom feeder and that just means this particular bowl gouge has probably a 60 degree uh, nose angle on it. I can get in there a little bit better right there around that rim without hitting the rim. And I keep checking my my depth off and on. And that's always a good idea. 
having that waste block on there is a really nice advantage because I can go a little bit farther down and not worry about the final thickness of the base. Here I am using a negative rake scraper to clean up the bottom of my base. And I'm not sure if I do it here, but I just go back and forth with that uh, thickness gauge. There I am checking. And I'm probably very close at this point. Now, on the left side, I still have quite a bit of wood to take off around the widest diameter where I'm pointing right now. And I will go to a hollowing tool. This is a Trent Bosch hollowing tool, a straight tool with a steel tip. And this is my preference. Um, I use carbide scrapers for hollowing, but they can be a little bit grabby. The steel tip is really nice. I like that. It's easy to sharpen and they're relatively cheap. And if you drop it on the floor, it's not going to shatter. There's, there's one of my uh, carbide tools. It's a bent tool. And I'll use that to go around the corner there. And at some point I'll show you where to put this on the tool rest. You have to have that straight area on the tool rest and not the bent area or else your tool will will kind of rotate if you're not careful. Yeah, right here I'm showing you. So that's where that tool should be held on that straight area. Right there, and you'll have a lot better luck. It'll be easier to control that tool. All right, now I did quite a bit of the work on the inside of my base off camera. There's a lot of that stuff you just can't see anyway, so uh, I used a variety of tools. I used several hollowing tools, which work really well in this area right in here. I've got that wall thickness uh, pretty good. I can still do a little bit of shaping and profiling on the outside of that if I need to. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and finishing on the inside here. Then we're going to work on the lid. And I got some, some uh, ideas about the lid. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah, onward. All right, I did a little bit of sanding on the inside here. Uh, probably to uh, 220, not extremely fine. So what I've got here for my finish I put a coat of blonde shellac as a base coat. I've actually put a couple of coats of that on there, let it dry. And then what I've done is I've got a, a Sam Maloof mixture. Uh, which contains some varnish, boiled linseed oil, polyurethane, and mineral spirits, a quarter each. Okay, that's the second. Uh, coat and I've again I put probably two coats of that on there so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wax this and what I've done with this wax is this is a new mixture that I just made the other day it's a uh, 20% raw tongue oil pure tongue oil which uh, doesn't have dryers in it and the rest is beeswax. I really haven't used this, so I'm going to just smear a coat on the inside of this. We're going to call this good. And I'm going to just take a paper towel and smear that around. There we go. 
So I am ready to reverse chuck this, work on the base, and then eventually the lid. All right, now I have my lid chucked up into a screw chuck. This is the underside of the lid. Here is my base. So I've got uh, quite a bit of wood to work with. This is uh, much larger than it needs to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is establish a, a tenon for this uh, area right here. Call it a mortise and tenon connection. And that's just going to sit in there. So that'll be the first thing I will do. True up the bottom of this. Maybe dish this out just a little bit. All right, at the opening of my my lid right here, marked on these uh, dividers, right there, and I'll start forming my corresponding tenon. Now you'll notice right here my my screw is coming through the bottom of my lid, but that's okay. What I intend to do later on on the top side of my lid is to attach a little handle. And I still have, uh, oh, I don't know, probably a good inch of thickness here. So I'm going to mark this on here very carefully. Turn the lathe off. So I need to be just a little bit bigger than that line I just uh, scribed on there. Now I got pretty lucky there. So I've got the, the proper thickness on that uh, tenon. The only thing I need to do is just go down a little deeper. And I'm going to draw a pencil line on this right, right about there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, I brought you around to the other side of my lathe. This pencil line indicates the high point. So from here down, it fits fairly well, but back here it's still too thick. So I'm going to just take a little bit more of that off. And I'm going to go slowly here. I don't want to make a mistake at this point. And Looking at the opening of my, my base, I probably have uh, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch depth on that. Okay, still not there, but I'll work on that and we'll get her perfect. Take a little bit more of that diameter off. And I would say that is perfect for right now. I don't need to make that any tighter. All right, let me show you what I've got here. As I work on the top of my lid, okay, I've got a very nice connection right there. So there's the underside of my lid. The inside of my base is all finished, sanded and sealed and finished. So I'm going to just put my lid between centers, okay? If you recall, I've got my base on a waste block with a tenon down here, and I'll part that off or take it on my bandsaw later on and remove that. So I'm all ready to profile my lid. And that should be running fairly true. And I can profile and shape my lid on the base and that'll really help me uh, understand where I'm going. All right, 
right now I'm happy with that shape of my lid so far I've got to just uh, make sure I'm not going down too thin here that looks pretty good All right, now I've got a piece of tissue paper in between my lid and my base. I sprayed a little bit of water on that. And the reason I want to be able to take my tail center away and drill out the top of my lid from my little handle. So uh, a little bit more shaping. I'm pretty happy with that at this point. All right, now I am ready to drill my lid. This is where my little handle detail is gonna go. Drill the lid, and then I'll probably have to stabilize this. It's really, really punky. Yeah, punky. Turn the lay speed down just a little bit. Now I'll probably clean this up with a tool of some sort. Now I've got my lidded burl container almost completed. You can see in this camera right here, I just don't have the, the lid detail completed. I need to glue that in. So let me show you what I have here. There's my lid. I'm very happy with uh, what I've got here. It took me a long time to uh, Stabilize this with some CA glue and sawdust. So this little bit of wood right here holds these wings on there, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to use some epoxy to attach those. And there's the profile right here. Okay. I wanted the, the inside profile of these pieces right here to mimic the outside profile of my lid. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll show you pictures of the final piece completed. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. That helps a lot and uh, I'll talk to you next time.